Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Joshua Schwadron, who's the CEO and founder of Mighty, and he's a personal injury disruptor. Joshua, welcome to the program. Thanks so much, Mike. I look forward to chatting with you. Yeah, you as well. And I love um, expert titles that are descriptive and personal injury disruptor sounds really amazing and cool. But before we dive into that, give us a little bit of your story. What's your background and um, entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, um, I went to uh, went to law school, uh, never intending on uh, being a lawyer. Um, and uh, had a number of uh, entrepreneurial and, and business-oriented roles. Um, and about 10 years ago, uh, I founded Mighty, uh, which was the perfect uh, combination of legal tech startup for uh, matching my legal background, uh, but also something that uh, was entrepreneurial and allowed me to put, hopefully, a lot of lawyers out of business. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that's what we're building in mighty. Okay. So, uh, I like putting lawyers out of business or putting something out of business. Cause that definitely defines that word disruptor that you're talking about. So how specifically are you looking to disrupt and put lawyers out of business? Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're in the personal injury space and, you know, a lot of people know it by the billboards and TV commercials that they see. Uh, you know, dozens of times, uh, depending on what city you look like, uh, you live in uh, yeah. a, a day. Um, and one of the interesting things about personal injury is it helps people um, who are vulnerable at their most vulnerable. Uh, and the lawyers that take on that responsibility should be uh, at the height of ethical standards, um, and they should have incentives that are aligned with the incentives of their customers. But being in the space. Uh, for as long as I've been in it, uh, I, I've come to realize that the incentives that personal injury lawyers have uh, are often at odds with their clients. Uh, and at Mighty, we, number one, want to call that, that out so that everybody who uh, is injured and hires a personal injury lawyer knows about those bad incentives. Uh, but we also wanted to launch a service that uh, changes those incentives and provides a better way uh, for people after an accident to get the justice that the, the they deserve. You know, I always love hearing things like a better way, because that infers that the current way is not the best that it could be. So um, what, what are you seeing in your experience of uh, what are the shortcomings of the personal injuries industry, personal injury industry? So what's, what's broken uh, currently? Yeah, great, great, great question. Um, so, you know, one of my favorite, uh, I'll, I'll talk about incentives a lot. And one of my favorite quotes by Charlie Munger is, show me the incentive and I'll show you the action. Um, and so what we're, what we're seeing is that how personal injury lawyers get compensated um, is actually at odds with their client's best interests. So just to go a little bit into inside baseball, uh, personal injury lawyers get paid a percentage of the settlement. And at first glance, that sounds like they should have aligned incentives. The more, the higher the settlement, the higher the lawyer's fee, the higher the amount that the consumer gets. Sure. But the, the, there's a nuance, which is that the lawyer gets paid a percentage of the gross settlement and the client, the person who's injured gets a percentage uh, of the net settlement. And huh. that leaves some bad incentives for lawyers to refer medical providers who overtreat because the the larger the treatment, uh, the larger the settlement, uh, the lawyers are less concerned about case expenses and often pass along expenses to their clients that they shouldn't internalize themselves. Um, and, and a number of other kind of bad behaviors that that sort of business model, um, you know, you know, really leans into. You know, let me make sure that I understand that correctly, because I think I do. But from the business side of things, I, you always hear, um, like, do you watch Shark Tank? Yes, of course. 
Yeah, right. I, I love your, of course, you know, I've watched every episode and even uh, my kids, uh, I'll go, okay, what was the valuation that they're looking for? And yeah. they, they know how to calculate. Yeah. But um, one of the things we always hear is, oh, wow, good job. You did 1.4 million last year. But then when it comes down to, oh, and your expenses were 1.5, oops, you know, so it sounded really great yeah, to have exactly. this 1.4. So what you're saying is the PI attorney is getting paid off the top, top, top line, which includes a lot of fluff like expenses and fees and medical and all this, but then the actual client that got injured is they're getting a percentage of the bottom line, which is not the, 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 the it should be the other way around, right? Yeah. I, I love the, I love the exasperation in your voice. Cause you're, you're, <laughs> you're a hundred percent right. I mean, for uh, real, I mean, what shouldn't the, the, shouldn't the client that got injured get the percentage off the top and then it should incentivize yes, the exactly. attorney to reduce the expenses, reduce yeah. the bloat, reduce the whatever so that they preserve their commit, their revenue or their split. But that's not the way that it is. That's not the way it is. And wow. and even worse, you know, you often see those numbers on the billboards and TV commercials. I won my client five million dollars. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of ways, that is highly misleading because, as we're talking about, even if they did get their client $5 million, and by the way, that would probably be a, a one in 5,000 client. Wow, yeah, yeah. Um, that $5 million is not going to that client's bottom line. Yeah. Uh, that's a total settlement, not what the client actually takes home. Yeah, the, the client case was $5 million, But then when you start doing all the reduction, 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 you know, it's just like in business, top line is your incoming revenue, top line revenue, and then what are all the expenses? Because it really doesn't matter at the end of the day what you made last year, except what were your what was the, you know, when you look at the profit loss, what was your profit? Because if you had so much going out in expenses correct. and everything else, then it doesn't matter what that top line was. So talk a little bit more about what Mighty's doing to fix that. Yeah. So uh, Mighty um, has teamed up with Mighty Law which is an independent law firm that operates across the United States. And mighty law lawyers agree to a code of conduct uh, that is unlike anything that exists in personal injury today. So what we've done is we've taken about a dozen bad incentives that personal injury lawyers have. Um, and we've, uh, we've teamed with a team of lawyers who have agreed to never do those things. So we were, so we were just talking about these billboards that often talk about this gross settlement number, the number at the top, um, our, the Mighty Law lawyers agree that they'll never use that number without the right context and explaining to people that that's not actually what they get. They get a, a lesser number. And we think that combined those dozen things uh, actually make a really meaningful difference in the outcomes that consumers get. So then is is working through Mighty Law going to get the client a stronger take home per se? Uh, we, we certainly uh, think so. There's a number of expenses that Mighty Law lawyers don't pass on to their clients right. that traditional lawyers do. Got it. Uh, but the, the m- most importantly, and, and Mighty Law charges a, a lower fee uh, than traditional personal injury lawyers do. Uh, but we also think that having a lot more aligned interests uh, helps even with intangibles, like helping people with mental health issues, helping people find doctors, helping people uh, bridge their financial situation from the time they get injured to the time they get their settlement check with potentially financial assistance or, or friends and family loans. So, you know, one of the things that uh, is, is true of personal injury is that people think of it too narrowly. They think about it just in terms of a settlement. We think about it more holistically. Uh, people after an accident, they need a, a whole a whole host of help. And having a company and, and people who can guide injured people through their journey after an accident is, is really important. Yeah. You know, that's a big, uh, I, I love the two words you use their guide and journey, because from a marketing standpoint, it's the customer journey that from the first time they, they interact with your brand to the very last time they high five or handshake, you know, to go, thank you so much. There is a journey and there's a journey leading up to even being able to interact. So um, most of the time, an attorney probably would not view themselves as a salesperson, but they are because you have to win a case. Well, if you can win the case by being authentic, transparent, and 
uh, letting them know that you're going to guide them through this process. Look, there's some landmines all the way through the legal process. We've been there. We've done that. We're going to guide you around them through them so that you fully understand each and every step of the way. I would venture to say that prospective clients would feel just so much more empowered, right? Than just like, oh, I didn't even know what was going on. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think um, information is power. And I think for too long, uh, lawyers have hid behind legal jargon and complexity uh, to keep their clients on the outside. And I think the world's, the world's changing. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think uh, it being, being able to roll with those changes and it used to be, you know, let's just get that high rise office and let's just do this. And, and again, you know, uh, using probate as an example, um, the, the theory behind, or the, you know, the, the, the concept behind probate is there's just a whole lot of cost. And then what the heirs end up getting is very little because there were so many legal fees. And so if you could avoid that or mitigate it, and that's exactly what you're talking about here. So here's a, a question. Um, why don't more people know about this? And secondly, when you are um, approaching this or bringing these topics up, you probably and your firm are probably getting some pushback, right? Yeah, we, we've gotten a tremendous amount of pushback. You know, I think uh, there's a lot of legacy industries that uh, all have the same pricing, all have the same service quality and depth, all have the same lack of transparency. And even though they technically compete, they're not competing on elements that matter. They're competing on which billboards can, can uh, seem the toughest or scream the loudest and who can acquire customers the cheapest. And w since we've launched uh, our service about six months ago, we've been ruthlessly attacked by personal injury lawyers, which is exactly how we know we are doing the right thing and on yeah. the right track. Uh, and I think it's just, you know, there's personal injury lawyers spend so much money on advertising that it's hard to break through, which is why, you know, it's, it's exciting for me to be on podcasts like this, trying to get the information out to people that, you know, if they are injured, even if you don't end up working with Mighty, uh, you, there's so many things that you can do to make yourself better off uh, with any personal injury lawyer uh, that represents you. Um, and I'll give one example. Most people don't realize that your personal injury lawyer, uh, their, their, their prices aren't set in stone. And so one of the things I advise people to do um, if they're looking for a personal injury lawyer um, is to negotiate the price with your personal injury lawyer. Uh, what they tell you the standard contingency fee is, which is usually 33%, um, negotiate, try and get it less. Um, and I've started to create videos to help inform and educate people after an accident about uh, how they can be more empowered. You know, it reminds me of, of a model in real estate where, you know, you like, for instance, my uh, my dad was talking to a real estate agent a few months ago and, and he reported back to me, well, I just could never pay a real estate agent 6% to sell my house. And but what he doesn't didn't realize was well there's a lot of things that go into into that that you share the fee with the other agent, um, but so then in the real estate industry there's these other you know companies whoever you know whatever name I'm sure we've heard of them but it's like we're gonna list your house and sell it for one percent or we're gonna do all the work for twenty five hundred dollars and that gets you know the real estate realtor industry all up in arms because it's like you're doing the same thing as us but for less fee and that's what you're doing is you're doing the same legal fee you're, you're all um, lawyers you're all providing, you know, high uh, uh, quality, but you're, you're, you know, kind of pulling the curtains back uh, uh, to in the industry going, look at all this bloat. And what if we can save you this, then that's more money for you at subtle at the, at what you get out of your case. Is that a, is that a good comparison there? Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's exactly right. And, and just to be clear, even though I'm a lawyer, I'm actually not a mighty law lawyer. So uh, because of our regulatory um, the conflict of in, interest in the legal space, um, Mighty, which is the company that I'm the founder and CEO of, and Mighty Law are actually two separate entities with two different ownership structures. Um, and we work obviously very closely together. And the Mighty Law lawyers all agree to a code of ethics that uh, you know we're all really proud of. 
Uh, I just wanted to add that one clarification. Very, yeah, for for compliance, for you know, uh, uh, you know, whatever. Well, yeah, I totally get it. You know, you might you might have a conflict of interest or whatever. But yeah, you're an attorney, but you're not an one of the mighty law attorneys. But we're talking about the mighty law framework. Exactly. That's exactly Perfect. right. So give us an example of a client that's come through your process and they were a little skeptical, like, okay, well, it sounds good, but I guess let's go through it and, and kind of like thumbnail sketch. What would be, what would, you know, like you call them the billboard attorneys, what would they have paid or, or experienced? And then what was their response afterwards? Like, Oh my word, you guys said you're going to do this. And yes, you did. And it's changed my life because. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. So when, when someone goes to a billboard lawyer uh, and they call the billboard lawyer, the first thing that the billboard lawyer does is overpromise. And the reason that they overpromise is because all they want them to do is sign in the dotted line because the minute they sign in the dotted line, they're locked into paying the, the lawyer's fee. Uh, at Mighty, um, when somebody signs uh, as a Mighty, as a client of Mighty Law, uh, they they have... 60 days to change their mind uh, without owing anything for the legal services that they received. And the reason that we do that uh, is because we don't want any overpromising. We want to have to deliver on exactly what we promised. So the first thing they'll see is when they call, there won't be overpromising. Um, and if there, if there would be, and which there isn't, uh, they, they have 60 days to leave with uh, having gotten free legal services and free help owing owing nothing to mighty law so i think that's number one and that sets the tone um but throughout the entire process uh mighty and mighty law is thinking more holistically we're asking the client how are they not just asking them about their legal case or legal settlement helping them get medical treatment helping them get mental health uh, help helping them bridge the financial gap uh, that they might have between the time they get injured and their settlement um, and of course, helping them get a fair and fast settlement, uh, because that is part of their personal injury journey, uh, but that's not the only thing. So I think people who go through uh, Money Law as opposed to a, tr to a traditional law firm, I think they really see the kind of more humanity um, and uh, a lot better incentive alignment uh, than a traditional personal injury law firm. You know, the, the other thing that stuck out to me, like the, the, the big aha for me was what you said about, you know, getting paid off the top of the bottom, like we talked about. The other thing right there was, you know, when you get, you know, the a, a specific attorney gets someone to sign on the dotted line, boom, you're in. And then it's almost like, peace out, see you, bye. You know, I've done my job and now, you know, we're going to put you through like a, you know, bunch of cattle and herd them through and you're just another number. What you said with that 60 day time frame to like change your mind, that puts the onus on the mighty law lawyers, right? Because if we don't do a good job and treat you right and help you understand things the first 60 days, you can tell us peace peace out. And that puts all the power exactly. in the client. That's exactly right. That's a that's, right. that's yeah, a I, I really I, big I more. yeah that's a really big aha. And I think that story uh, when people understand both of those uh, equations, you know, it's almost like, hey, as you're shopping around for a personal injury attorney, ask them these two questions and phrase question number one based on what we talked about earlier and number two on what I just said there and just see what uh, see what the response is. And then, you know, they should answer it this way because this is how a mighty law works. And, uh, you know, as you go around and just ask those questions, if you don't feel comfortable with what you're being told, Come on back and we'll treat you right. And and I think that that is yeah. such a really turning the tables, really such a, an interesting approach that you guys take. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Well, well said. Well, Joshua, I tell you, um, I really, you know, I, like I started off the conversation, certain things jump out at me and I like to go deeper on them. And, you know, the word disruptor, I love that. And you have certainly articulated clearly how you guys are disrupting. And I love your approach because guess who wins in the end? your client, the one that's been traumatized or injured or whatever the case is, and they don't have time for not understanding. And, and, you know, how about let, you know, it, the people that do get taken advantage of quote unquote, at the very end, they're like, wow, I went through and I got this, this was bad. This was bad. And I got, t you know, injured. And then at the very end, I discovered that <laughs> I could have been treated better. So I love what you guys are doing. If someone is listening to this thinking, let me at least check it out. Um, what's the best way they can learn more and reach out and connect with you all. Yeah, we have a great domain name, mighty.com, M-I-G-H-T-Y.com. And uh, we have a, a phone number, 
Uh, we have an email where people can submit questions um, and we're excited to help people across the country. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Josh. It was a real pleasure talking with you today. Thanks so much, Mike. It was a pleasure joining you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.